everyone, and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen, and this is episode 103. It is Sunday, March 16th, 2014, and it's a beautiful day out. It's sunny. I think spring is finally poking its head out. I don't know. I could be, it could just be a major tease again, but hey, um, I'll take it. And yeah, I'm actually home alone all this weekend because Dennis had another snowboarding trip. So more knitting for me. Yay. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, no episode last week because uh, there was just too much going on, too much on our plates, and we just I just never had the time to sit down and record. Um, I did try recording during the week, but by then it was just, uh, I, I wasn't feeling it, so I just said, let me just do it this weekend when I have time, and I have more knitting done and more goodies to show you. So we're doing it today. <laughs> um, so first order of business, uh, housekeeping notes. If you tuned in last episode, uh, you are probably aware that my podcast is now available on iTunes. Again, yay. Um, so the good news is it's available on iTunes. Um, you don't have to change your feed at all. I just had to do a couple of switcheroos and tweaking on my tech savviness side, whatever you you want to call it. But yes, I figured out a way how to do it, as did a couple of other podcasters. So yay. Like I said, if there's a will, there's a way. We can all make it happen. So um, the only downside is uh, that you will not be able to see um, any episodes before episode 100 because, let's face it, there are not enough hours in the day for me to go back and re-upload all those episodes that would take forever. So um, I apologize. You can still watch uh, Yarngasm via my blog, volunvine.com, or on Blip, or on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, so definitely just subscribe to those, um, and, and you can catch up on all... You don't even have to subscribe. You can just log on to those or go to the website and um, just watch there. But going forward on iTunes, the way it's rigged up, you're, you're only going to be able to see from episode 100 and on, so... There's got to be something like, uh, yeah, I don't know. That it, something like that is inevitable. So that's the way it's going to roll. Um, the other um, housekeeping note that I want to touch on for that one, uh, many of you have been emailing me about file size. Um, I was not aware that you were having trouble, like my when I export my video after I'm done editing it, it kind of uh, exports to a file size of about 200 megabytes, and I was not aware that that was um, kind of causing you guys a headache when it comes to downloading my uh my podcast so uh if you're watching this episode hopefully the file size will be a lot smaller i'm gonna try and shoot for 100 megabytes around that vicinity so um again i apologize i'm sorry you were having trouble uh downloading that uh i'm hopefully i figured out how to do it so yay let me know um but yeah sorry that was a lot of rambling but it's it's important stuff you just gotta talk about it um what else Okay, what else, what else? So I guess let's go into what I'm knitting. Um, off the needles, yeah. Um, <laughs> I have an FO. My Jinx yarn, my Jinx Glitz sock, Mardi Gras Fat Tuesday socks are done, yes. So here's what they look like. I have my two matching sock blockers. I am so psyched. Um, so yeah, basically. I did an afterthought heel, and as if I talked about it in the last episode, um, this is like one of those. This has to be like the second or third time I've ever done an afterthought heel. Um, I'm, I when I first tried it, I was not a huge fan uh, because of the pick up. Like you, when it comes to knitting afterthought heels, it's exactly what it is. You knit the whole tube, the sock, but like when you hit the part where you want to put the heel in, you just knit 32. If you have 64 stitches cast on and you reach the part where you want to put the afterthought heel, you knit half of that so 32 stitches you knit with scrap yarn so it holds a place where you can rip you know pick up the stitches afterwards and knit said heel so um I I did it on the first sock and I was like as I was knitting I was like there's got to be a better way because I, I was kind of on the wall about like why do people really enjoy this this is so tedious you know because the way I was doing there, granted there's no right or wrong way to knit an afterthought heel if you're ending up with this, the same, you know, end product here, but, um, there are more better efficient ways to do, of doing something, I think. So, um, yeah, I was knitting, uh, you know, 
I finished one sock and then I got to, I was watching the Nick Girls and I got to uh, the part where I have to rip out the, the stitches for the afterthought heel on the second sock. I don't even know if this is the first or second sock anymore. I can't really tell. But anyway, um, we'll pretend this is the second sock. Um, so I paused the podcast and I'm just like, I'm just going to do, which I should have done in the beginning, uh, just Googled a how to pick up stitches for an afterthought heel. So I did a, a, a search on YouTube and sure enough, ironically, um, or coincidentally, I should say, uh, a tutorial by uh, Leslie from the Knit More Girl, uh, the, uh, the Knit Girls uh, popped up and she had a tutorial. I was like, oh, brilliant. So it's a real, if you haven't seen it or you're thinking about um, trying an afterthought heel or you know, you're, you're in the same boat as me, I will post a link to that tutorial because it is great. Um, and I tried it on this one and I love it. So yeah, now I can see why people like doing these. Um, there is, there is a method to this madness. So. Um, but yeah, I'm very pleased with these. So I think when I'm, I'm not even going to wear these yet because I kind of want to build up my, um, my sock drawer. I don't know. I just want like a whole drawer of unworn socks. Is that crazy? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah. So love them. Uh, so that's off the needles and I still have, a, ooh, I'm hitting everything today. Um, I still have a lot of yarn left over, so maybe I will knit a pair of, I don't know. I know people that have babies, but most of them are boys. I don't know if they're, they're down for the glitter. I don't know. I have to, not that there's, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I don't know. I'll see. Maybe I'll knit some hand warmers or something, something small, clearly. I don't, I didn't even weigh this, so I don't know how much I have left over. Um, but yeah, what else? Oh, my, um, so sad that I'm still working on this. I am so not competitive at all. My, <laughs> my Ravelenix, uh, Tempest cardigan. So here's the back. This has been done for a while. Um, and then I finished the right side of the front. There's that. And the yarn is um, Cephalopod yarn, Skinny Bugga, in, let's see if I can get this to focus. Let's see, Blue Lobster, which is clearly the blue, and then Vampire Squid, which is this lovely variegated shade right here. I'm a little concerned that it's a little too busy on my part, but I think over like a black dress or something or gray, it'll look kind of cool. I don't know. But I love it. I just love the color combo, regardless if it's my speed or not. I don't know. I love it. So, um, but yeah, here I'm on to the second. It's nothing. I did. I finished three stripes, and now I'm going on to the decreases. So, um, yeah, this is the other side. Yeah, the other side of the front. Um, so yeah, that is where I am. And if you remember the gripe that I had with this one, which I'm, I'm okay with because of my tangled um, skein that nitpicks. <laughs> um, sorry, Twitter. Um, <laughs> my, uh, if you recall, my nitpicks ball winder destroyed my, um, my other, my first vampire, my skein of vampire squid. So um, ending up in a ginormous tangled mess, which I still have to figure out what I want to do with it. Um, I'm still debating, but when I got the second skein, I found it on Eat Sleep Knit. They miraculously had this uh, continued colorway. Um, I can't hold it up very well, but you can tell that there's a slight difference in dye lot. So this one's a lot more saturated and this one's a lot more muted. So unfortunately, I wish it was all this because yeah, me and the muted colors. Um, but on a happy note, I'm happy with that. I'm okay with it, so don't worry. I will be fine with it once it's cast off. Um, but many of you have been egging me on, and I've been egging myself on to splurge on a new ball winder. So <laughs> I treated myself. I bit the bullet, and I got one of the mother of all um, ball winders that I've, uh, it was recommended to me. Uh, and I'll just pick it up. This is the Strotch. How incredible is this? <laughs> I am besides my I am beside myself that I even own one of these. But um it's wonderful. It's awesome. And it doesn't hurt my wrist, which I was 
cranking away on my other ball winder and it was driving me nuts but I should not have this band on all the time I should really like a spinning wheel if you have one of these elastic bands on when you're not using it you should always take it off the gears but how awesome is this oh, oh gosh um and yeah it really spins great balls of yarn so or, or cakes um but yeah Strotch fiber equipment company yeah so very pleased with that uh I'll try not to get too ball windy happy. So unfortunately that is all I've been knitting on at the moment. Um, work has been incredibly crazy and stressful and I've just not had enough time uh, to really get starditis. I don't know if that could be a good thing or not a good thing. I don't know. Um, but at least I have something going, right? So, um, but yeah, I'm kind of itching to like knit on, knit something else. Um, but I do have spinning. I have been able to get some spinning done and I have something lovely, lovely to show you. Um, the lovely, <laughs> cause I like saying lovely, um, Miss Ellie of, uh, Ellie's Knit Insanity podcast. Sorry, I'm trying to tie this so it doesn't go everywhere. Um, and Ellie, who is, uh, Elspeth81 on, uh, Ravelry and Twitter and pretty much everywhere else. Um, she also has an Etsy shop where she dyes, uh, yarn and she creates punies and fiber and sews, um, really, really pretty stuff. And she was so kind. Um, she made me my own custom punies. I love these. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> these are so beautiful. Um, and here's her tag. And I love this sheep. It makes me smile every time I see it. It's so cute. Um, but yeah, it is Shades of Woolen Vine. I'm beside myself. This is awesome. Thank you. 50% um, baby camel and 50% Tussa silk, uh, 20 grams. So um, let me see. Here's her info. So yeah, insanity. That's how you say it. Um, so yeah, and I, they're so soft and totally me, the grays, the purples. Um, I couldn't, when, once these came, I could not stop myself. I had to cast it on or, um, start spindling it, spinning it. Wow. Um, it's been a long weekend. Um, but yeah, here's where I am right now. I'm using my, it goes so well with my, uh, trindle and it matches my nail polish. <laughs> see if we can get that to focus. It's spinning up very, very fine. Um, very thin. I made Navajo ply. I like Navajo plying everything. And this time I will be sure to ply it counterclockwise once I'm done spinning it clockwise because that's what you do. Um, so yeah, it's spinning up very thin. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah. It has a very, very short staple length. I believe that's what happens with when you um, spin with silk or I have a lot to learn when it comes to spinning and fiber, but um, I do know what staple length is and it has a very short one. So it took me a couple of tries to get the swing of it. Um, I tried um, spinning this on my uh, my Turkish spindle, which is adorable and I love it. And I was able to get some of it done, but I think because I'm still new to Turkish spindling, this is it. Um, this is subterranean woodworks and it's beautifully handcrafted and I love it. Um, but it's because it had like a short, it has a short staple length. I was having trouble like keeping it going because, and doing the half hitch. I'm getting used to it though. Um, slowly but surely I'm getting, I'm getting used to it. I'm learning how to do the butterfly thingamajig with your hand when you get like, when you spin a long length. Um, so, you know, I'm just, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Um, and I tried with the, the fiber that I got from Vogue Knitting Live from Long Island, um, livestock company. I got some of this, which has a very long staple length. So it's like going from one extreme to the other. And it was like, I, yeah. So I have to go through pre-draft this and, um, here are the other, I think these are like, uh, one ounce balls that I got. But yeah, these are the other colors from Long Island Fiber uh, Company, and I believe it's 100% alpaca. It's soft, oh, and dense and lovely. Um, so yeah, 
And there's also a really great tutorial on um, YouTube about uh, how to how to get your leader started. Um, it's like you put before uh, you put the fiber in above. I'll post a link, but you put the fiber in pre-drafted fiber to get it started over the hole. You poke because it comes out. This kind of like slides into it, and you put the fiber over the hole, and then you just poke the the shaft through so you have like some fiber hanging here i'm not explaining this right but you draft out what you need and then you use that as your leader so it's like stuck in here and then you just kind of half hitch it and then get it going but um it's a really great tutorial i'm still getting the swing of it like i said but you know it's a learning process which is great i love learning new things when it comes to knitting so yeah um what else? Yeah, so that's pretty much all I've been spinning. I have uh, my hobbled hoy on my on Tallulah, who's over there. I spun on her yesterday, but nothing, not enough to make me want to bring her out and show it to you guys. So maybe next week. Um, but yeah, thank you, Ellie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but speaking of Ellie, uh, we have a knit along coming up, which I mentioned in the last episode. Um, it's called the Any Man's Jumper Knit Along, uh, where we choose a pattern, a man, probably, a, you know, a man's pattern, uh, and knit a sweater for, or, or jumper, as you can call it, um, for the significant man in our life. Um, and I decided on, let me see, um, oh, I should tell you what pattern I'm knitting. It's the, oh, I'm sorry, it's the Ranger pattern, um, from, by Brooklyn Tweed, uh, which is perfect for Dennis because it ha it's just like an open cardigan. No, no, no. It's a button-up cardigan with a high neck um, and raglan sleeves, and it has kind of like a um, a waffle texture to it, like a thermal texture to it, if you will. Um, and the yarn that Dennis decided on was I got a whole bag of it. I believe I got like eight skeins. Um, was Malabrigo Rios in cocoa, and it came yesterday in the mail very excited about and then I may swatch this after I'm done recording um but it's so soft I know many uh many of you were like oh you know don't use Malabrigo it's gonna pill but this is actually their worsted uh it's super wash merino um 10 ply and I know they're um like their other worsted their single ply worsted and their single ply um lace weight that definitely pills because you know it's it's not plied. So I think because it's plied, um, it's not gonna, um, pill. So, <laughs> but it's so soft and so squishy. Um, I think he's really gonna like it. And I knit something else, uh, with it before. Is this the same? No. I thought it was. I think they changed their texture. Um, a little jumbled but I cast on something else with this previously I thought it was Rios I could be wrong it might be something else that I thought Riasta I don't know but here's something else that I cast on I that I believe was uh, Malabrigo Rios but it has kind of like a cottony texture to it I could be wrong this could be the same fiber and I'm just not seeing it <sighs> I think it's a different fiber I don't know it's been a while so <laughs> since I touched that one I don't know exactly what kind of brand of Malabrigo it is but anyway um, but yeah, so I get 210 yards, uh, per skein and I got eight skeins of this. So I should be in the clear. I think I got one extra. I did the math, you know, so we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm knitting and I should probably tell you what date. Um, so yeah, please join, um, the knit along if you're interested, if there's a special man in your life that you want to, uh, knit a sweater for or jumper. Um, it's going to go on from um, March 22nd to May 3rd, so a six-week uh, cal. And um, in order, okay, I started a thread in the Ravel in the Yarngasm Ravelry group, um, but me and Ellie, we didn't discuss logist like specifics, you know, as far as like who can join, when, when they can join, but in order to legitimately win a prize, um, you must post, I created another thread within the Yarngasm Ravelry group for, that will not be opened until the start date, which again is March 22nd, next weekend, I believe. Yeah, March 22nd, which is a Saturday. So I'm gonna unlock that thread and then from there um, to enter, just uh, leave, a com uh, leave a comment what you're knitting um, 
and the yarn you're using and the pattern. Yeah. And um, that is how you're going to enter to win the prizes. So I'm giving away, I believe, uh, two skeins from uh, yarn, Volan Vine Yarns, uh, which is my hand-dyed yarn. And uh, Ellie's going to give away two prizes from her Etsy shop. So we'll figure out more logistics soon, but in order to enter, you must and um, post within that thread once it's unlocked. Um, the thread now is just for general chit chat. Um, so yeah, we'll leave it at that. Um, and I know many of you, some, not many of you, but like some of you have asked me, oh, I already have a, um, a sweater started, you know, can I, does it count? You know, can I just knit along? Unfortunately, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, disregard what I said, I apologize. Um, you know, you're more than welcome to do the knit along with us, but you, um, cannot enter the prize, uh, enter, um, enter to win the prize because you had already cast on, um, your sweater. So, but yes, you have to start and finish your cardigan within, within that time frame. So if that makes sense, uh, if you have any questions, just email me and I will be me or Ellie. We're both moderators. We are happy to answer any questions. Um, so yeah, that said, um, that's the, the knit along. Oh, wow, that's a lot of words. Um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Okay. And speaking of alongs, uh, I joined uh, the uh, Laura from the Diaries Notebook uh, started a self-portrait dialogue, uh, which I am going to do. So I'm very excited about that. I'm, I'm so bad with dates. I can't remember them. <laughs> okay. So this dialogue is going starting, it started this weekend, um, March 15th, and it's going to end um, April 15th. So the idea here is to create a like personality board, like the general, what I'm doing is like, I'm going on Pinterest and just compiling a bunch of images that kind of rep what I think represents me as a person, like my likes, my, you know, who I am as a person, <laughs> like, um, you know, images that describe who I am as a person. Um, there you go. And I'm posting that in the thread and everyone's doing, they're either doing, um, like a collage or it can be anything, you know, just like with images and colors and finding like a running theme within that, you know, collage, if you will, um, and using that as inspiration to for the dialogue. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I will post a link to that dialogue if you're interested um, checking that out and keeping up with that. Um, but yeah, so that's what's happening. I feel like I've, I have a lot to talk about this week. <laughs> well, yeah, it's been a week since I podcasted, so duh. Um, shop update. Um, so if you are not interested in hearing about or seeing what's in my shop this week, feel free to mosey on out of here. Um, thanks for tuning in and I will see you next time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you are stick around cause I got stuff. Um, oh yeah. Oh, I had something that was on the needles that I did not show you. Um, I cast on another sock, a vanilla sock, and they're using my hand dye, actually. I had the, um, the myth sock that I was knitting on with the Bedford base, but I wasn't enjoying it, and because I'm discontinuing that base, I mean, you know, it's, it's fine if you like BF, BFL, but, um, it's a strong, you know, it's a sturdy sock, very workhorse, but I don't know, it just didn't feel great knitting with it. It's just my personal preference, so I'm discontinuing that, and... I instead got a superwash merino, which is lovely and springy, um, and it's my McGinnis um, sock base. So, and I could not resist casting on with <laughs> Wicked, which is one of my um, one of my favorite colorways, and it, I, people actually request it a lot. So I've been dyeing up a bunch of it. Um, if I can get that to focus, but I really love the way that it's knitting up get that to focus would be great there we go so lots of bright greens yellow gr hints of like yellow green some browns in there it's really pretty and squishy and I really just love the way it's knitting up so there's the ball I have another um highly requested colorway uh mull dives which clearly is very has like lots of shades that you find in the Caribbean. Um, that's where it was inspired by. I've never been to the Maldives, but I would love to go. Um, so if I can't go there, I'll just knit with it <laughs> or something. 
So this is on my new uh, my new fingering base, um, Flautig, which is German for fluffy because it's fluffy and single plied. And yeah, so I'm just what else did I want to say about it? But yeah, it's 100% um, superwash merino, single ply uh, fingering, and it's so squishy and soft. So highly recommend. Um, is that, and I also dyed it up in, this is my Lush base, which is MCN, Merino Nylon Cashmere fingering, and it's very soft, of course, more cashmere, <laughs> so, yeah, and it's just really, a really soft, squishy base as well, very luxurious, um, so I believe one of these are going to Kim from Craft Stash, because she requested it, so, We'll see uh, which one she wants. And another one that I, I'm like on a total like ocean Caribbean kick here. This one happened by accident. I don't know, I wrote down all the notes to make it, but I really love the way it turned out. Um, I call this one Cockle Cove um, after a beach in Cape Cod. It just reminded me of it. So lots of sandy uh, browns and turquoises. It's lovely. Um, so if you don't like the shocking, you know, hues of this one. You can tone it down with this one. And this is on, again, my MCN base. So yeah, there's that. And then another one that I dyed up, same base, is um, Daydream, which I am smitten with. It kind of reminds me, if you remember that perfume that was really popular in the 90s, the Gap made is called Dream. Everyone loved it. Um, <laughs> this is what it kind of reminds me of. What it remind that this kind of reminds me of that, like the color and not the smell. But <laughs> I wonder whatever happened to that. They stopped. I think Gap just like discontinued it. But anyway, I digress. But yeah, love it. Um, another one that I'm like super super proud of. Sorry guys. Um, I'm super, super proud of this colorway because I've been wanting to dye it up for a long time and I finally got around to it because I actually remembered while I was dying. I'm like, oh, I should try doing that. Um, this one is actually going to Ellie. She wanted me to reserve it for her, so Ellie, this is going to you. Um, this is called Reflector. And if you're familiar uh, with the band Arcade Fire, their latest album is called Reflector. And these are all the colors off their album cover which is like grays, black, and just pastel-y purples, uh, teals, and pink. So, and I love the way it looks on um, the Blitz uh, sock base that I got. It's 100%, no, 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 I'm sorry. It's percentage, I should look it up. 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% gold stellina, and 400 yards approximately in here. So, very lovely, very squishy soft as usual. I only, I love dyeing with soft yarns. I don't know. I love it. Um, and here again, it is same colorway on, um, uh, the Flautig, um, base. So I love the way it turned out. Very pleased. I will be dyeing this up again. So stay tuned. Um, and this one is another happy accident. Shaken, not stirred. Just a very almost like masculine color, I want to say. So, you know, you can see knitting a pair of socks for a man in this. If they don't like bright colors, but you don't want to knit them a boring black sock or gray sock or, you know, get some color in there, but it's still masculine at the same time. Or, you know, hey, if you love these colors and you're a lady, you know, it's very subtle and sophisticated. Chicken, not stood, you know, James Bond. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I did not get enough sleep last night. I don't know. I stayed up late. Um, ooh, yes, I have reds. Don't worry, I did not forget the red bases. Um, this is another colorway that I dyed up that I really like. It turned out a little bit muted on the McGinnis sock base, which is my 100% merino um, uh, sock base. Yeah. Uh, this is called Pucker Up. It's a new um, colorway that I dyed up last week and just like muted berries, like almost like a cranberry, I want to say, but with like little shocks of red in there. So yeah, that's a burgundy, if you will. Um, so there's that. 
my hair is doing weird things today guys i don't know what's up with it anyway uh and this one again is on my uh blitz <laughs> sorry um, and this is Cersei, um, totally inspired by Game of Thrones. I love her. I think her character is awesome. She's so evil. Um, but I couldn't resist. Um, so yeah, it's glittery, totally her shades, like this dress that she wears. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased with this one. And uh, I feel like I, I was a dying machine again. I don't know. I just went to town. I have a couple of one of a kinds. And let me see. This is a one of a kind. I'm not going to do this again. I'm not like a huge fan of autumn colors. I don't know. It's not my personal preference. I mean, you know, but it's still like, I know there are people out there that love like autumn colors and like pumpkin and, you know, it's too, maybe I'm just not in the mind frame for autumn. I just want summer to come right away. So, um, yeah, this is my one of a kind of the week. So, yeah. Okay, so I feel like that was a lot of chatter. And thanks for sticking with me. Um, but what else? I, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to talk about blather-wise. Um, my treadmill, I've used it once this week. I'm horrible. I've just been having kind of a crap week. Um, so I, my energy levels have just been zero to none. I come home and I just want to knit and I just want to, or there's other things that I have to take care of that I don't really get around to doing. So the treadmill suffered or I suffered. I lucked out on that. <laughs> but, um, I think I'm going to try and do some tonight, but I really just want to hole up in it today because I need a day of just full on knitting. Um, yeah. So what else? Yeah, that's about it. Um, my parents came into ten since Dennis was away. My parents were like, Oh, we'll come out. We'll come take you to dinner. This is becoming a habit. He goes away. They come out, take me to dinner. I don't know. It's nice. I like it. <laughs> so, um, we went, we got seafood yesterday. We got some oysters and mussels and, you know, we had a really great time. We went to this place called extra fancy in Brooklyn. And, um, yeah, it was a great time. I uh, hung out at my place for a little bit and yeah, so that, that's pretty much, pretty much it. Um, I'm, and now I'm totally blathering. So that said, uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful nitty week ahead of you. Um, enjoy the weather if it's wonderful. Um, and I'm sending sunshine your way, so, you know, you need some, <laughs> I'll try to. And yeah, so that said, have a great week. Happy knitting. Bye. <laughs>